Good morning. It's time for our daily devotion. And today we're in Romans chapter 12, one of those well-known chapters in Romans that has uh, so many great things to say to us. Uh, usually I end up focusing on the end of the chapter. Today I want to focus on the beginning of the chapter uh, in those verses that we probably know best out of uh, this particular passage of Scripture. Uh, the first couple of verses say, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, <clears throat> we know already that Paul has spent a large amount of Romans talking about grace and talking about the law and talking about the fact that uh, there are uh, two approaches uh, to serving God. One is a legalistic uh, approach that says this is what the law says so out of duty and obligation this is what I have to do. And then there's the grace side which says in response to the grace and mercy that God has shown me in response to his love I'm loving him back and since I'm loving him back Part of that loving him back is to do what he asked me to do and to keep his commandments, as Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we've seen those two paths develop very clearly here in Romans. Now, Romans 12 uh, goes a step further and says, yes, we are to serve God, not out of obligation, responsibility, not because the law says we have to or because we're being legalistic, but because of a response to God's grace and mercy and love, we want to do what pleases him and uh, what serves him and serves the kingdom best. But Paul then in chapter 12 here says, OK, so how do we do that? How is it that we do the right thing and do it for the right reason? How is it that we serve the kingdom and serve the king uh, by doing those things which further the kingdom and please the king? How can we do that without being legalistic and without being uh, doing what we're doing out of obligation and duty? And he says the way that happens um, is by being transformed by the renewing of our mind, and that's the way we will prove what the good and acceptable will of God is. So in other words, what we do, we do because our mind is changed. I heard somebody say one time that now that I'm a Christian, I can do whatever I want to do. And then they followed that statement by saying, and since I became a Christian and my mind was transformed, my want to's are different. The statement was not, now that I'm a Christian, I can do all the things I wanted to do before I became a Christian. Uh, the statement was, now that I'm a Christian and my mind's been transformed and changed and renewed uh, through the Spirit of God, I now have a new set of want to's and I can do the things that I want to do because what I want to do is the things that are pleasing to God. That's what Paul's saying here in Romans chapter 12. So how does that happen? Well, we spend time in God's presence. We spend time talking to God. We spend time listening to God. We spend time reading God's word. We spend time in fellowship with other believers who are also being built up in their faith. Uh, we spend time subjecting ourselves to the teaching and the preaching of God's word. Uh, we spend time uh, with those whose highest priority is to have their minds transformed and renewed and to do the things that God asks us to do. That's how our mind is transformed. That's how our mind is renewed. That's how our mind and our want to's change so that then we can do the things that our heart desires to do and wants to do because they're the right things. So today, make a commitment to be transformed by having your not mind renewed and uh, then you will begin to see the difference in the way you live out your faith every day. Now, go make it a great day and I'll see you tomorrow.